In this video, we're going to be answering some simple questions um, based on what we've been told about the, the three basic trig functions, whether they're positive or negative. And again, we're going to be using that uh, mnemonic device, all students take calculus to describe whether an angle lands in quadrant 1, 2, 3, or four. So we're not going to be told the angle measurement. We're going to be given some information about the trig functions. Um, now, what the A stands for is all of them, all of the trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, are positive in this quadrant. In this quadrant, only the sine function is positive, only the tangent function is positive in quadrant three, and only the cosine function is positive in, in quadrant four. So let's just look at the type of questions somebody might ask you. Um, they'd like to know what quadrant, if the sine is positive and the tangent is negative. And really what this means is that um, if sine is positive and, uh, and another function that they give you is not positive, then it can't be in quadrant one. I'm just going to kind of cross that out. And the only place where sine is positive is here in quadrant 2. So our answer for this is going to be quadrant 2. Somebody might ask us what quadrant an angle lands in if sine is positive and tangent is positive. And actually this is going to be a fairly easy one. Oops. Because if they give us a 2 trig functions are positive, they must be in quadrant 1. That might have been a better place for us to start out. Now the third question might be, what quadrant if the cosine is positive and the tangent is negative? And again, they're giving us two functions, and if they're not both positive, they can't be in quadrant 1. And the only other place where the cosine is positive is here in quadrant 4. If they tell us that 2 are negative, so now they're asking where would the angle fall if the cosine is negative and the tangent is negative, probably the easiest way to think of this is which one is positive. And one has, at least one has to be positive in each quadrant. And if cosine and tangent are negative, it must be sine. So we can say once again that must be quadrant 2. And lastly, someone might give us something like cosine is negative and sine is negative. And again, when they give us that, we know that the tangent must be positive. Something has to be positive in each one of these quadrants. And the place where the tangent is positive is quadrant 3. And believe it or not, that is the type of question that you might encounter. I will say that one of the ways in which they write this information, which might be a little bit of a problem, is that they might say the cosine of an angle is less than zero, and the sine of an angle is less than zero. So instead of saying it's negative, they might present it as being less than zero. If we go to the previous page. This information might have been shown as the sine of an angle is greater than zero. The tangent of an angle is less than zero. Again, um, please don't be confused by that, but if necessary, think to yourself, well, this is positive and that's negative, and then go back and use your um, mnemonic device. All students take calculus, which tells us which trig functions are positive in each quadrant. 